All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Drew back here at Titan Medical. Um, I am now here to go over my blood work. Like you guys saw last time I was here, they drew my blood, put the panels together, um, got everything back fairly quickly. I mean, I feel like I was just here yesterday. And now it's time to actually sit down with a medical provider and go over exactly what we need to fix and optimize based on those panels. So it's really good to not have to guess what might be off, what we have to fix. I don't want to have to throw a whole kitchen sink of supplements into my body to try and fix an issue that I may or may not have. Because of this blood work, we're going to know exactly where we're at and exactly what we need to address, and they're just going to address it for me. They're going to go over the therapies with me, explain everything to me, and basically provide everything that I need to get me going in that direction. So I'm really excited to see exactly where I'm at and what I need to do. How's it going? Good, how are you? I'm Cass, one of the nurse practitioners. Nice to meet you. First class name? Andrew Donaldson. All right. I have your labs here. I um, want to go over them with you. So, complete blood count looks great. No, no elevated um, hemoglobin hematocrit numbers look fantastic there. Um, now, I did see your liver function test. Um, I did see some elevation in your numbers. I'm going to recommend glutathione. It helps detoxify the liver mm -hmm. and improve hair, skin health, and nails. Um, also, boost your immune system substantially. We definitely want to give these numbers, you know, much better for you. Okay. So gotcha. That on. that'll help with the uh, liver numbers directly. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. Uh, moving on down, the um, lipid panel cholesterol, um, you know, within normal range. Um, I did see some elevation in some of the numbers here, uh, but diet and exercise, you know. Less red meats in the diet, more fish, of course, definitely help with that, okay? Mm -hmm. But um, nothing too far away here. Um, thyroid panel, looks like it's um, improving. Um, moving on now. Testosterone levels. So as you can see, the testosterone levels could be better. We can optimize these levels for you, help with just better energy levels, better recovery, you know, sexual health improvement, you know, healing, improving after workouts, just overall bring back some vitality. We can definitely optimize these levels for you. Mm -hmm. Any questions on that? Um, no, it seems pretty straightforward. So that will actually raise my testosterone levels back up to a healthier range or an optimal range, like you're saying? Absolutely. This will definitely make you feel better, you know, overall, and it should help the numbers as well. Gotcha. And that'll okay. help with, you know, putting back on some size and some muscle and stuff. Absolutely. Like that, right? You know, burning fat, building lean muscle will definitely help Good. with the testosterone therapy, okay? Um, hemoglobin A1C, fantastic numbers there, no issues. Vitamin D, I do see some deficiency there. We can optimize those numbers. Vitamin D plays a very important part in your immune health. In addition, it can help you just feel more energized throughout the day. So we can definitely get those numbers up with our therapies, okay? Awesome. B12 numbers. So B12, B12 could be a bit better. We do have some therapies that can definitely improve the, the B12, burning fat, feeling more energized, just feeling better overall. Mm -hmm. So we have injectable therapies that can definitely help you achieve that. Awesome. Any questions about the B12? No, sir. Right. Yeah, so I think we have a plan. Some of these therapies we can give to you, all from a pharmacy, mm -hmm. um, sent directly to you. High quality, high bioavailability can really put you in optimal levels. Awesome. So, 
So what I'd like to do is, you know, see if you have any questions on any of these theories, any other questions overall. Um, I just, if you're recommending it, if it's, if it's what's going to put my numbers back in line, I'm all for it, man. So let's uh, let's dive in and see what we can do to fix it, all this up and just, you know, optimize it. Sure, absolutely. I think this is a, a good plan for us, okay? So what I want to do now is just do a basic physical examination on you. Listen mm -hmm. to heart, lungs, fill on your abdomen, mm -hmm. just kind of check you out. Sound good? Yep. All right, let's do it. Okay, so I'm just gonna listen to your, your lungs and your heart, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna lift up here. Okay, big deep breath, we're in and out. Good, again, in and out. Perfect. No pain back there? Nope. Good deal. You can go ahead and sit back and I'll listen to the heart, okay? Mm -hmm. So just breathe normal for me. Oh, sounds pretty good. No tenderness there? Nope. All right, I don't feel any inflammation of the liver. I don't feel any hernias. Lungs are clear. Heart sounds great. No murmurs. It all looks pretty good. Awesome. Go ahead and swallow for me. Oh, good deal. Okay. All right. So that all looks pretty good. Awesome. All right, man. So, like I said, thanks. You know, lungs, heart, all look pretty good. No issues there. Vital signs look fantastic today. Some things on the labs did show that we can optimize, you know, testosterone, you know, glutathione, vitamin D levels. So there's some things we can do to make you just feel better overall and be more healthy. So I want to go ahead and get that taken care of for you. I'm going to have my assistants come in there and go over some details with you, get you taken care of. Awesome. Thank Any you other questions for me while you have me here? No, man, that was really straightforward. That was way more simple than I thought it would be. So. Perfect. Well, that's what we do here. So good to, good to meet you. You as well. Uh, we'll be in contact, okay? Okay. Always reach out to us earlier or sooner if you need anything. Cool. So okay. if I have any questions or whatnot, I can just call. Just anytime. Call, right. text, email. Perfect. All right, text, that's convenient. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Okay, man. All righty, Andrew. So we're going to go ahead and go over your recommendations. Mm -hmm. So first things first, your hormone replacement therapy. Okay. He's prescribing you, the nurse practitioner, your testosterone, estrogen blockers, and HCG. Okay. okay. So obviously we're gonna prescribe your estrogen blocker as well because you know testosterone converts into estrogen and we don't want any of the negative side effects, mm -hmm. okay? The ATG also keeps the natural production going, also is a natural boost for your testosterone as well. Mm -hmm. So it keeps everything in a happy standing. Um, also, so you're aware, we're, we're gonna also gonna prescribe you your glutathione and your vitamin D because your vitamin D levels are low. Mm -hmm. Your liver enzymes are high, so the glutathione is gonna help detox that liver for you, okay? okay. So we're gonna recheck your liver enzymes in 30 days along with your cholesterol, thyroid panel, and your CMP. Okay. Okay? And then uh, we'll get everything shipped out to your home address that you have on file. It takes about two to four business days. Mm -hmm. You also receive your syringes in the package as well. At the end of the day as well, you'll get your tutorial videos. Mm -hmm. So you'll know how to administer your medications. And then every three to four weeks, we'll check up on you to make sure you're feeling well with your current regimen, okay? Okay, perfect. Yeah, and then you can always call, text, or email. Mm -hmm. You can ask for Michelle, okay? And then you'll get your prescriptions in the mail in two to four business days. Okay, great. Perfect. All righty. So that's it. We're done for today. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. All right, guys, uh, just finished up my uh, second trip here to uh, Titan Medical, and based on the blood work from last time, I was able to talk to the medical provider and get lined up with a couple different therapies that are going to correct all the issues that I had in my blood work. As we talked about last time, I had a feeling there were going to be some, um, some issues in there based on the length of my contest preparation and just based on just the general level of depletion and how I was feeling. I knew something was off. The blood work confirmed that, and luckily these guys were right on top of it. Uh, it's nothing new to them guys. They, they deal with this stuff every single day. So it was very simple to uh, go over exactly what I need to do to not only bring these numbers back into a healthy range, but to optimize them. Because this whole project that I'm doing, it's not about simply getting better from not being well. It's exceeding where you were at before. And that's what I mean when I say we're going to optimize these numbers. I'm going to come out of this project better, bigger, stronger, and just in general more healthy than I was when I began the seven month contest prep. So it'll be very exciting to see where these therapies can take me. I know it's gonna take me in the right direction and I'm 
just very anxious to see just how far. So next time you guys see me, we're going to be back here to retest and get some blood drawn and see exactly where we're at because, you know, if we can measure it, we can improve it. And these guys are on top of their game. They're going to keep a close eye on that, and we're going to see where we're at. What's up, guys? John here from Titan, and I'm here with Yetta, who is one of my Titan-sponsored athletes, uh, and she's got an amazing, extraordinary story to go behind it, too. So if you don't know who Yetta is, Yetta's going to introduce herself, and she's going to explain where has she come from, because you see this awesome body and everything she's put together right now, this package, but she does have a story behind it. So Yetta, why don't you tell everybody who does not know you where you've come from in your transformation, because you've come pretty far oh yeah pretty far right. um, well um, I come from losing 70 pounds um, I competed for about eight years and I ended up in a, a car accident uh, mm -hmm. that de debilitated me I had neck and back injury from that and mm -hmm. I had to totally retire from the sport so I got really depressed I couldn't work out anymore I had to go to physical therapy blew up gained a lot of weight blew up to 215 pounds Wow and it took me years to try and lose the weight right. I was just discouraged didn't think I could do it again um, I tried all different high yo-yos and things to try and get my head straight, but when when I train, it's all or nothing. Right. I just can't give a little bit. Super dedicated, Super guys. dedicated. And so um, I met one of my friends. Um, she got me into a program called Herbalife. And I just tried it just to get my body just regulated on normal eating again. Mm -hmm. So I did Herbalife, got down to 140, and all of a sudden I'm like, ooh, I'm starting to see muscles again. You know mm -hmm. what? I think I'm going to train for a bodybuilding competition just as a triumph to myself because I was told that I couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. I was so I hired um, a coach, uh, Kelly Lynn, uh, she's a YFBB Pro uh, physique competitor, to help me on my journey mm -hmm. towards the stage. So mm -hmm. I decided to pick the Iron Bay Classic, trained for that. We got down. I lost 70 pounds for it. Um, I won overall women's physique champion. Mm -hmm. Got nationally qualified. And here I am now, I'm training again um, for the Iron Bay as a warm-up to Nationals, where I'm going to be competing in Masters um, Nationals in Orlando. And the reason she's doing that is to get her pro card, if you guys don't know. So they want to compete, they get qualified, and then they go on to get their pro card, so they can be, hopefully, IBB pros, right? Yes. So it's been awesome. So if you haven't checked out Yetta's page, check out her page. She's got a lot of other talents, too. So what else do you do? I'm a professional opera singer. Can you believe that? <laughs> this little girl pushing out that awesome voice. And it is awesome. If you haven't heard it, you got to check it out. Especially if you're in Tampa. When the shows start opening back up, I'm sure Yetta's going to be in one of those shows. And you guys can go check it out on stage two as well. She's been on stage two times, hopefully, this year. Yes. Hopefully, you know. So uh, she's got super dedication. Um, I check out her page daily, obviously. I look at my athletes, make sure everything's going good. And she's in there all the time. She's told me she's in there for four hours a day. <laughs> yeah. All right, with her, yeah. with her guy Reggie, so he's training too, so he's come a long way too, so you guys aren't going to get to see that transformation until the show. <laughs> the show night, we're going to have them both on here, and we'll check them both out, so they can show you what went on, show you how everything's been done at the show, and show you hopefully what the results are. Hopefully we're going to take home some wins. Oh, if yeah. not, proud of them either way, because they've shown a lot of heart, a lot of dedication, a lot of passion, and that's what Titan Medical Center is all about. Yes. So we're rooting for you, Yetta. Thank you. We can't you. wait. Can't wait. So we're excited to have her in here. Excited to see her on stage this year at the Iron Bay Classic, which is presented by Tight Medical Center again this year. Jose Santiago, Sun Tran put on that awesome show. So it's gonna be it's gonna be classic. So if you guys are in the Tampa area, come check us out September 12th. You guys will see us. Iron Bay Classic, Titan Athletes, Titan will be set up there. So come check it out. Come check out Yetta and all the rest of the Titans out there. So I appreciate you coming in today, Yetta. Yes, thank you so much for having me, John. Absolutely. We'll see you guys September 12th, and you guys can check out Yetta's page on Instagram and Facebook. Plus, she's all over the Titan Medical Center page. So keep it locked, keep it tuned, and we'll see you soon.
What's up, guys? John here. And Sharice. And we're back with another Cupid's Corner segment for you guys. Uh, Cupid's Corner, if you haven't tuned in before, we always go over like tips, tricks, certain things that should help your relationship either flourish, get back to where it used to be, or just ignite that flame that you guys both want, right? So this week, we have some great topics for you guys. One thing is something that you guys can do. Um, I guess the second thing is something you can do too as well, right? For sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the first thing, let's get into it. So now that this COVID deal is calming down a little bit, I guess, we'll in call certain it states. The calm. You know, it's calming down, so hopefully we don't get any other spikes or any crazy stuff. No. The first one is visiting your partner's hometown. Mm-hmm. You can learn a lot about somebody from where they come from, mm-hmm. honestly, really. Um, and usually it's different parts of the country. There's different things going on, right? Right. So people act different, people de- dress different, they talk different, they eat, you know, maybe some different foods and stuff like that. So it's always good to, you know, see where your partner came from, you know, especially if they're really good people and stuff like that and they like the place where they came from. You know, some people don't. They're like, I came from a small town. I don't want to go back to that small town. I never said I'd go back there, you know, but it is what it is. You know, that's what makes you. That's where you're part of, right? Mm-hmm. So. You know, with me and Sharice, Sharice came here when she was five years old to Tampa, Florida. So when I met her, I mean, it wasn't really crazy about, you know, getting to see her hometown because I already knew the hometown, right? Right. I mean, but, you know, you don't just get to see the hometown. Let's be realistic here. You don't go to the hometown to see just the hometown. You usually go to the hometown to be like, hmm. Well, in my scenario, I'm like, hmm, are there any lingering friends around here? So, you know, you just like to know what's going on. You know, that's me personally anyway. Um, But, you know, as as far as me, his friends, like his (laughs) old school friends, you know, from high school and stuff like that. For instance, we went up there for your... um, was it your tenure? It was tenure. Tenure reunion. Tenure, right? And I got to meet some of the people he went to military school with, which was pretty cool because, you know, it's uh, he went to school with these people. And military school is a little bit different than public high school. Um, you know, it's a little bit smaller of a group, and I'm sure that they have, you know, really tight relationships. So it's good to hear the old school stories about John and what he did and how he did it because those are funny stories. Oh, yeah. And don't let John tell you because, you know, my hometown's here in Tampa. We'll call it that. Um, but you know, he's ran into people that I went to high school with, um, you know, and got some, you know, cute little stories out of it too. But it's nice to visit hometowns because usually that's how you get some of the background history on someone. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be, oh, they came from Brazil or, you know, whatever it might be. I went to Chicago. Right. I got to meet like all his friends that were DJs and (laughs) go out of the house music (laughs) clubs and get to see what was going on. Now, of course, this is like. 12 years ago Gosh. um but it was fun it was fun you know it was, right. i i loved going to chicago yeah, i was like sure. oh yeah we get to go out have a good old time you know but yeah it's, it's good it's i mean good. it's good you know and I, I like showing sharice like where i came from and kind of what i had to go through and stuff like that because it's just different mm-hmm. people grow up different people do different things you know mm-hmm. they don't experience these different things unless they've actually lived them themselves or they've seen them and mm-hmm. Most of the stuff that I grew up doing, I don't think Sharice has experienced before. Example. Come uh, on. The big one, a big one's a horse. Snowmobiling. Horses. I used to race and, and show horses. Who would think John? Uh, yeah, I know. Horses? So, yeah. So, That's cool. You know, just a lot of different <laughs> things, you know, like where my old house was, where I grew up at. I got to show Sharice that and stuff like that. Meet a variety of my different friends that she's never met before. You know, I only get one that really comes down and visits me all the time. But, yeah. uh, you know, they're up there. And it was just cool, you know, showing Sharice, like, where I went to high school at. Um, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Just It was cool. It brings back memories for me. It was good to share those memories with Sharice. I had good memories, thank God. And, uh, you know, it was just cool. So she's, she learned a little bit more about me and where I came from, mm-hmm. which increases that bond, that, that connection between you two. Now you know a little bit more about each other. When you know more about somebody, it usually increases the bond and tightens things. I agree. You know? So it was really, really cool. So that was cool. So that's the first one. The first thing that we want to offer you guys for advice is, Make sure you guys are seeing the hometown of where or city where your you know your loved one or partner came from, mm-hmm. and that way you can see you know their origins or kind of where they came from and, and maybe understand them a little bit better. Right. Right. So that's just one. So the second one, and this is kind of where I dealt like you know I was teeter tottering like you know these are things you should do, but this is something you should not do. <laughs> okay. And I see it all the time. Um, and this is. Don't compare your relationship mm-hmm. to other people's relationships. 
Okay, I see it all the time. And I see a girl, I want my relationship to be like this. Or I want it to be like that. You know, at that point, you're setting some expectations that could be very, very high that you might not hit goal-wise. Right. Right? Um, because if you see so, and, and different things work for different people. Your relationship and your boundaries or what you and your partner are, are okay with might be totally different from the couple that you're emulating or emulating, you, you want to be like. Mm-hmm. You know, and that, that's where it comes into play. Like, make your own path. Mm-hmm. Do your own thing. If, you know, you set your own boundaries with your partner, you have your own experience with your partner, you set what is okay with you and your partner. Mm-hmm. That's what's your guys' thing. Right, right, right. And, and comparing that to somebody else's relationship, you know, like I said, you might be setting yourself up for failure because your partner might not be that person like that's in that relationship, might not act the same way, might not do the exact same things. And you have your, your mind set like, this is how I want it. This is how it's going to be. And when that person doesn't come through, now you're disappointed. Now there's, you know, there, there could be some friction between you guys. You know, there might be some issues. So that's really where it's at. And another one that goes right along with this don't compare your relationship to your last relationships. Oh, that's an ugly one. That that's horrible. And don't bring it up. Don't, you bring it up to don't the person is it it, bad business. You're like you know what? He used to get me these kind of chocolates. Yep. I like those chocolates way better. Yep. Do not yep. do that. My ex <laughs> never did this to me. Like. How many times have you heard that? Yeah. Like, probably a lot, I think right? everybody does it, right, at some point. I, I, I think, you know, it, it is a mistake that people do do. It's usually like your amateur mistakes. That's it usually is. like your uh, after the honeymoon period, because everybody has honeymoon period. Yeah. Uh, me and John are lucky to have honeymoon period 12 <laughs> years later, right? Um, but, you know, it's like kind of after that honeymoon period where the yeah. you know, I feel like it's that amateur hour where you're still learning each other and, you know, it kind of... You might reminisce about what happened in the past with maybe one of your other significant others yeah. or a past husband or yeah. ha- past wife yeah. um, that they did something that, you know, let's just say this one doesn't do. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, you probably just don't, just don't bring it up. Maybe if you want it, if you want it that bad, for instance, let's just say your last wife cooked all the time, right? And your new wife doesn't cook, right? You're gonna want to make sure that you don't say anything about the last wife cooking, and maybe nonchalantly say something yeah. about you wanting dinner every night. Yep. yep. <laughs> you know, yep. just hey, honey, I love your cooking. Can you cook again yep. tomorrow and the next day and this weekend and the next day? Absolutely. So there's way <laughs> there's ways to phrase things or to ask for things without making the comparison mm-hmm. to the ex. And, and like I said, people are going to be more defensive when you say something like that. Like my ex, you know, like, oh, well, why don't you go back to your ex then? Or, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not your ex. You yeah. know, it is what it is. Yeah. So, I mean, there's ways to ask, you know, like I said, if it's whether it's in the bedroom, it's out of the bedroom, the way your relationship is or is handled or certain things you guys say to each other. You know, this is where you guys set the boundaries. And really, you guys should set that in the beginning of the relationship. You know, be honest, communicate. We said that a million times over and over, but communicate, you know, what you want or what the boundaries are going to be or or how you like things or what you expect. Well, not even that, though. I mean, honestly, let's be realistic. I mean, what I I expected was Sharice, I told her, listen, you're going to be my girl. You're going to cook and clean. I didn't know how to cook, and I did. I did so I had to teach her both because you got to be able to do it if they'll teach somebody, right? I, listen, I, it's the truth. I'm not lying. You know, so, I didn't. I, I, I no, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, I, I was saying, you know, realistically, I really think that you know, even over time, that you build those boundaries together. Like some boundaries might change, some things might be, you know, you might adjust things throughout the relationship. Yeah. So you know, that's a good way to just build it together. Sure. You know, you're going to build it together sure. on what is expected of each other sure. and not have to you know do any comparisons. issues are going to arise the best way to do is communicate about the issues get the issues cleared away set up the boundaries know where each other's heads at get on the same page mm-hmm. i think that's a that's another big mistake a lot of people don't do they don't get on the same page or they lose the page they were on with their partner yeah and that's a whole different subject you know so at that point you want to make sure you guys communicate because that's key and just make sure that you guys are not comparing your ex to your new relationship. Because yeah, that's bad. You obviously left the ex or the past relationship for some reason. Right, okay? didn't work out, right? That's why they're their ex. Exactly. So at that point, you know, you're thinking through your head, you're like, 
you know, all these bad things, but this one good thing this person did for me. All right, so at that point, listen, your partner, your new partner could be able to do those things for you mm -hmm. if you ask properly or you set the boundaries or expectations that way. And that way they know and they, they, they understand how you feel and, and you guys are communicating like this, which is, like I said, it's key to any relationship, business relationship, mm -hmm. right? Emotional love relationship. I mm -hmm. mean, it's key to have. So. Just make sure you guys are following these little guidelines because I promise you guys, it will save you a lot of hurt, a lot of time, and a lot of problems. Okay? <laughs> Think about it. You guys have it easy. Me and John have to create all these boundaries on so many different levels. <laughs> Business, <laughs> emotional, bedroom, outside, yeah. everything. You yep. know, I got like 80 levels of different boundaries we had to create. Yep. I mean, it took us, you know, a solid 12 years. I think we're pretty solid on this now you know yeah. it's, easy. it's easy it's cake but you know it takes time yeah di different experiences could bring up different questions and yeah. those questions need to be answered by both you guys coming together and coming up with a plan yeah basically and that plan will set you guys up for relationship success yes and that is key relationship success because that's what you guys are going for right that's what people get in relationships or should get in relationships for there shouldn't be any ulterior motives it should be genuine. You guys should want to be together. Usually you guys are the happiest in the first couple of months or year or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And that kind of wears off. It hasn't wear off for us. So just keep it alive, man. And I'll come up with like five different ways to keep your relationship alive in the next coming episodes. Ooh. So you guys want to make sure you guys stay tuned every Sunday to Cupid's <laughs> Corner with me and Sharice. Right? Or you guys can catch it on our Facebook Make sure you guys are checking out Instagram. YouTube has all of these great videos and all of our different segments from our TV show. So make sure you guys are checking that out too. Don't forget, if you want to feel better, look better, and perform better, then you got to call us, 727-389-3220. You can text us as well, and we'll catch you next Sunday. I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we want to wish you and your family a happy Labor Day weekend. Make sure you stay safe and you spend time with your family and take that day off because you do deserve it. We all deserve a day off, so make sure you enjoy Labor Day by yourself, with your family, enjoying life.